38 years ago, in 1982, I went off to Spain to be in the production of the movie Conan the Barbarian. It was there that I had two goals, to train with Arnold and to have him teach me the broadsword. When I got there, I was hired as the massage therapist. It was a skill I pitched to get into the movie for the first place. But it allowed me to see the movie through the five months behind the director's chair. Let's start off with what I have presented to you over here. I created a Facebook page called Conan Treasure. Conan Treasure represented a compilation of backstories of what I saw in the movie Conan the Barbarian while it was being filmed. The person that I wanted to always be close to was this guy, Arnold. And in his autobiography, Total Recall, he actually included me in a paragraph describing me as his wildest training partner. And I had met him years before in the town of Aspen, Colorado. But my whole goal was again, to be in the movie, to participate as fully as possible and to be living the barbarian dream. Fun and Treasure was the uh, Facebook page I created to, to share with all of you who grew up seeing the movie when you were like seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and now you're an adult. This was 38 years ago. So I'm like the, the storyteller of some of the backstories that I thought you might be very interested in. Let's look at this picture here. <clears throat> when I got to the movie set and got hired, my first job was to stand behind the director's chair. This would be, let's say, Milius's, John Milius, the director's, uh, director's chair, and work on his neck and shoulders in between takes. And this chair kind of represents the kind of chairs that Arnold and Sven and other cast members sat in. And because I was so new to this movie, I went out and bought my own director's chair, which as a surfer, this, this was my style. Up here is a photo of Arnold sitting on a bicycle seat at the Tree of Woe. And it was here that I could kick back, watch Arnold refilm in my beach chair while we were at the uh, Mediterranean. So my very first job on the very first day was to stand behind John Milius, kind of a bearish kind of a guy, and watch him direct the pit fights. And here I saw Arnold and his array of cruel weapons um, knock off one victim at a time. In the meantime, because I am working on Milius, he's starting to get to know me better and better and like me better and better because I'm helping him get through the 12 hour days um, of filming, doing massage work on his neck and shoulders. The very first, first day I arrived on the, uh, in Spain, I met with Arnold and Arnold said, meet me downstairs in the hotel gym and we'll do a workout together, okay? And in the gym was Sandal Bergman. Sandal was the female lead, hot lady. And most of you who had saw the movie fell in love with her and consider her the princess of Valhalla, whatever. Well, she saw me in this little gym. This is even before I was even hired for the movie, she asked Arnold, she said, who is this guy? And Arnold said, this guy is from Aspen, Colorado, 
and he is pitching his skill as the massage therapist for the movie. She came over to me in the little gym <laughs> and said that her back was hurting from three days of climbing the tower, all right? So I placed her on a weight bench and I worked her back. I'm a really good massage therapist. So I fixed her back. She went back to the producers the very next day and told them to hire me, which was cool, which I didn't discover until three days later um, when I had reached a point in being there that if I hadn't been hired, I would have to leave. But I was told I was the talk of the set because of my massage skill. And I was introduced to Rafaela de Rennes, who said, take care of her. So for five months, I was at her uh, beck and call if she wanted massage at different times. Now let's jump ahead. Let's jump to the Temple of Doom. The Temple of Doom was a beautiful set where I was one of the very, very few Americans there. And in this, and because as the massage therapist, and because Milius liked me so much, he started inserting me into different roles in the movie. One of the 11 roles that I played was a high priest. And if you look at this yellow line, I'm actually right around there. And I was with about 465 gypsies, real live gypsies, gypsies that would <coughs> break up into flamenco dancing in between the two hour film sets, film setups, camera setups. So as an American, I had purchased Casanuelas, which is those clickly, clickly, clicky clicks. So as these Spanish people from real life gypsies, I mean like swarthy men that could kick your ass and interesting women, um, they started flamenco dancing at the base of these steps. So when they were doing that, I would play the Casanuelas, which meant they were very interested in who was this surfer kind of guy that could play the Casanuelas, the Casanuelas and uh, participate with their culture. Culture was cool, sexy culture. And this other photo here was like five months later, where we're actually watching the burning of the uh, this set. It was a very poignant moment. It was like a five camera scene. And we watched the temple burn up. And this is a scene where Arnold and the princess were led down the stairs, etc. But this is like one of the many things that I got to participate and watch and, um, and and observe to 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 what to excite my barbarian mind. Here's a gentleman that was one of the nicest guys on the film set. His name was Ben Davidson. He was an ex Oakland Raider. He told me the best football stories while we would sit on the war mounds watching the scenes that Milius would do with the horses and Arnold knocking them off, etc. Ben was really cool. And this picture, so skip that, skip that, skip that. Now again, this is my Facebook page called Conan Treasure. And it was to compile different things about the movie and other things about Arnold. Now, here's an interesting set. If you look at these photos, you'll see over there, you see a gentleman, his name is Nick Alder. Nick was the special effects head and he created this snake and very few people were watching this and observing and being on the set that I got to watch very closely as Arnold would skewer the, uh, the snake head and um, the snake would be killed in this certain scene. Nick was a interesting character to me 
because he did the special effects and he had won an Academy Award for the movie Alien, creating that creature that would come out from your stomach. And, uh, you know, that, that, that was very famous. So he did a lot of things that were pretty famous. But I, I treasure knowing him. Uh, he was from England. He had two other cohorts from England. And I had to introduce myself to him during one of the uh, dinners <coughs> as the, <coughs> oh, excuse me, the Aspen uh, massage therapist. And they uh, befriended me. So off we go to the next picture. And first of all, who wouldn't want to work out with Arnold? So I pursued getting into this movie. And the very first day that I was hired, not the first day that I was in the gym with him, I was in the gym with Sven Olthorsen, the 6'5 Shotokan champ of Scandinavia. He played the part Thorgrim. And I was with Arnold and these two behemoths. And Arnold looked at me and said, now begins your world-class workout. And that's what happened. Each, almost every day, every other day, whatever, we would train in our little gym. It would be just Sven, me, Eric, which was another stuntman, a Sandal, uh, not many more. But it was my time to be with Arnold and see his magnificent training pro program. He he, after he said, now begins your world-class workout, he flipped his arm into a flex in front of my face, and his arm was as big as my head. I admire this guy. He had it together. He was very relaxed on the film set. He uh, definitely um, was one of the coolest people I've ever, ever, ever associated with. Now... When I came back from Spain after five months, I wanted to create a business um, and, a, and a concept of having this treasure chest of information to all of you that fell in love with the movie, meaning I, I'm doing what I was doing. My concept was to share with you the, the backstories. Now, the lower right hand, photo is from my deck and it has my helmet on the, the table and my weapon and I have an axe also and this this was very sacred to me because that's what I pulled from the movie was not to hang my broadsword like a lot of you people out there with your comic books etc on the wall but to actually work out with them. Working out with the broadsword is heavy duty on the forearms for sure. It's something though that when I put this helmet on, I'm a different character. I'm not, the, the rea I'm not in the reality that normal people are in. I'm in this barbaric fantasy and I wield a sword. And that's what throughout the comic books was what was depicted was this Conan character slicing through bodies and spiders and scorpions and um, wizards. Now, one of the scenes in the movie was um, the princess. She she's tied to this slab and. It's a very cold, cold, actually, it's hard to tell, but it was very cold. And as I participated in the movie and was allowed to be anywhere around the set, um, I was behind this, this slab with a coat. So in between takes, I could come around, put the coat over, um, was it Valeria? No, I forget her name actually, but to keep her warm. Um, she uh, was very frail. 
Um, there was another time at the top of the temple where she was fainting and I actually had to catch her because I was observing her and watching over her. And, uh, but that was one of my fun, fun skills is helping females in the film survive. Now, here's well, in the upper photo, it's a very sexy scene with Arnold and Sandal. And it's called the, um, the set was called, what was it called? Oh, whatever. As you see Sandal in her beautiful outfit there, and you see Sandal in her Viking Valhalla kind of outfit. Um, this, this moment here was very sensuous, very intimate. Um, the, it was inside, the set was built inside a truck and it was used, it was to utilize when there was, weather was not cooperating so they can film this interior scene. Now, I told you that as the massage therapist, my job was to work on this beautiful lady for over the five months. Her boyfriend on the set was the, the stunt coordinator named Terry Leonard. Terry Leonard is a magnificent, magnificent gentleman, cowboy, stuntman. He was the stunt coordinator for the film. He had just come from Tunisia to come over to Spain to do Conan the Barbarian, but he left the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, <coughs> where he did like under the truck stunt and the horseback's riding stunts, and cool, cool guy. He was multitasked, multi-talented. Well, here's a love scene between Arnold and Sam. And Terry Leonard was off in the desert filming horseback riding with uh, Arnold's double and Jerry Lopez's double. They were off in the desert riding away, right? And Sam asked me, she said, would you, <coughs> would you massage me so that I can become more relaxed to do the scene? Because there was tension in the air because Terry, the, the stunt coordinator, knew the scene was going on. And, and she was kind of, didn't know how to handle it. Um, and her emotions were, running high. Arnold, in the meantime, was loving it. So um, I would give her a massage so that she could be more warm and more available to Arnold for this scene. Another fun moment for me. This is my deck of my own home where I get my weapons together, put my helmet on, swing my axe, swing my sword. And all of you people that follow them, the cartoons in the movie, when you talk about Krom as the, as the god. But here's an interesting photo. Here's a photo of Krom guiding me in my endeavors. Just thought, yeah, I'd throw that out to you. Here's Arnold after the movie. Now, so now I'm trying to emulate the character Conan. And I, and again, I admire Arnold the way he had been so in shape for the movie and just blown away by what he accomplished with himself, with his, um, with his physique. Meantime, I'm trying to emulate Conan the Barbarian. It's fun. I mean, all of you out there fantasize a lot about the movie. You fantasize. Um, you might, I don't know what you guys play, but all you thousands that love the movie Conan the Barbarian. I went into that movie, immersed myself into it, and became, and drew out as much as the experience as I could to to satisfy myself, to know that I not only 
pursued knowing Arnold, pursued being in the film, I lived this barbaric lifestyle with him and the major stunt me. Now, let me go back to when I was like 24. I'm 72 right now. When I was 24, that's how I looked. And I was trying to emulate the character, Conan the Barbarian character. I was a surfer. And if you look to the right, it's from the comic book of Arnold being modern times. But I kind of come close. And that's how, how this whole barbarian Conan thing started for me was when I was living on the island of Maui. And I was living at a naked hippie beach. <coughs> a naked hippie beach that had about a hundred naked hippies in this paradise. We were far away from the town of Lahaina and uh, we, uh, we romped around in the surf and in our own little tree houses and tents. After three months of living like this, I looked like an Aborigine. And a gentleman in Lahaina who was an avid Conan the Barbarian um, comic book reader had looked at me and said, you remind me, <laughs> you, <coughs> you remind me of the character Conan the Barbarian. And he said, have you read the comic books? This was like 1972. Now, I had no clue of what he was talking about. And he left the Conan comic books before he left the island. He left a pile of them um, in front of my apartment door in Lahaina. And so I poured into these comic books and I went, whoa, what an interesting character this guy is. A long hair hero. I was a long hair. Um, incredible physique. Wish I had that kind of a physique. And but my thought was, someday, this is 1972, someday there'd be a Hollywood Conan that would play this character. And if that person existed and he had a body like that, I wanted to become friends with that person because I needed to know how to develop my own, my own, my own body. And I did it. I pursued, I changed my name to Conan, um, went back to the mainland uh, from Maui, um, constantly reading the comic books, constantly reading the Robert E. Howard novels, constantly looking at girls that were in the uh, comic books and trying to date girls like that. And they were belly dancers, for instance. The belly dancing um, girls that exist in the comic books <coughs> excuse me so so all these years preliminary to the film the film was made in 1982 um i finally eventually met arnold in 1976 77 in aspen colorado where i had moved to there I pursued his friendship. There we would ski together each each year. Then in 82, I went off to Spain to be in the movie. Now we'll go up. And this is Conan Treasure on Facebook. And I just compiled different things that were related to the movie or nutritional things that I felt was important to pass on to all you fans out there of the movie. Now this was the Tree of Woe. The Tree of Woe was a pivoting fiberglass tree that they tried, spent three hours trying to set vultures up on there. And by the way, Arnold's sitting on a bicycle seat. So now there we are in the desert by the by the beach, Mediterranean, and 
I watched all of this filming here. And it was just few people that would come out like Sven and Ben Davidson and some of the princesses from the, uh, from the temple. And we watched this scene. And one of the funniest things that I saw was the very first vulture that they were trying to set on a limb, which was made out of fiberglass, and the vulture couldn't grasp, hook on to the limb. So it jumped off. And the vulture's pretty big, and the handler was about the size of the vulture. And there you saw this vulture jump off the tree and start bounding into the desert that you see in the, the top photo. And you saw this little Spanish guy chasing after me. And it took three hours again to set the vultures up. I think they got tired. I think they chained them down. I don't really remember. But so two significant things happened to me during this set of days. First of all, you break for lunch. And Arnold would, would have this big glob thing in his nose to, to make it look swollen. And we had a tent to go to to eat lunch. So I would sit next to Arnold. Uh, Sven would be next to Arnold. Eric, across the way, was a stuntman. And um, Ben Davidson would join. And I looked at the seating, and I looked at Arnold, and he looked like Christ. And it felt like I was in the, the painting The Last Supper. You know, you see Christ and his disciples all uh, arrayed on the table. But there I sat with Christ himself, and I was part of that set of disciples. Very interesting moment. Very, very, very interesting moment. The other interesting moment was, as a surfer, I wanted to take a break from, you know, the camera setups. So I would go over in the desert by the water. <coughs> to lay down on a, a on a towel to sunbathe. Now, some of the girls, the cute princesses from the uh, temple, joined me. Now, this is Spain. Spain's very religious, etc. But they also have topless beaches. And there I laid under this under this bluff away from the filming here to, to sunbathe. And here about three girls joined me as, and I would look at them and they were topless. And it was so fun because they, they trusted me because I was the massage therapist. Okay. Now, as we lay there sunbathing, all of a sudden we'd hear these buck shots being shot things flying over the dunes, and we ducked down even deeper. And it was Milius, he liked to shoot ski in between, in between uh, camera setups. So the ski would fly this plate out, and he'd go not realizing that that butt shot was flying over us. That was kind of hilarious to me. I liked the girl's breasts. Now, this is my very, 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 very first stunt where I get killed. <clears throat> You'll see me fly in from the left. There I am. Sandal slices me up and kills me. Boom. Boom. Okay. There was a scene in the DVD where Milius talks with Arnold, and they actually mention my name during this filming. There's Sven. Here's Arnold in this magnificent, magnificent, isn't that amazing? Amazing. Here he is later in life talking to the graduates of the school 20, class of 2020. He, he really emphasizes the mind. <laughs> Calls the mind the most important muscle. And what was interesting when I trained with him um, he would tell me certain things so I could pass on to people. One thing was 
work out as if a thousand people are watching you, which comes from being a competitor and you, you, you train as if you're being looked at and it changes your style. It's pretty cool information. Make your workout as natural as eating. Uh, to stay motivated, make your workout a happening. These are things that he would throw out to me. One interesting thing, and again, it would be just he and I in the these little gyms. And he said, because he emphasizes the mind so much, he says, I think blood into my muscle. I think blood into my muscle. And I sat next to him as he did wrist curls. And I watched his forearm just kind of explode as uh, he did his reps. Now, during 1982, the world of personal trainer, I was a personal trainer trying to, to emulate Arnold and train, et cetera, and make, and make a living. During the scene where he's being painted, it took about two hours for them to paint this. And he walked out of the trailer over to the set, movie set, where he was laid out in between two posts. And um, Sandal was praying over him, etc. cetera. He, he had a book, he had a package in his hand on one day. And he opened the package and in the package was this book. His the publisher had just sent his new book, Bodybuilding for Men. Now, as I was training with him through the months in Spain, what I also needed was his comprehensive training program. And this was it. This was the book that um, takes you through uh, free weight training, his opening stretches, his weight resistance, his abs, his, um, his concluding stretches. And he opened the book. He looked at it, he looked at me and said, critique it. So I was the very first guy to see this book when he opened up the box. <coughs> now, so in 1982, that was very valuable for me because what I split from the movie, <clears throat> I had to, um, <coughs> I had to train people. So now I had the instruction book itself to, to relate what Arnold taught me and have a full, fully descriptive um, training program. Very valuable for me. Here is another, I was killed three times in the movie. And in this scene here, Terry Leonard, who I don't know what happened to him, if he hurt his ribs or something, because he did a fall down the well. And there is a depiction of his body from going down the well. But he needed the opening of the body being pushed over the edge. So he said, Conan, get into this costume. I want you to go to the lip of the well. And when Sandal is racing towards the well, she will stab you in the, in the side. You'll bend over. She'll put a rope around your neck and then pitch you over into the hole of the well. And then you'll fall into these three boxes. Now, Terry Leonard is down in the lower part of the well uh, filming with a camera up. And this was a very fun, fun stunt for me. First of all, I like being in the leathers. Um, and so if you, his instruction was once she stabs you and she puts the noose around your neck, um, she'll, I want you to pitch out. Don't pitch out too far to hit the wall. But as you fall, I want you to claw the, claw the air. You see that with stuntmen. They claw the air as they're falling. And as soon as you hit, as soon as you approach the, the, bat, the boxes, I want you to flip on your side. 
And that way, um, you don't get hurt. Uh, it took them two hours to set that rope up so they wouldn't choke me. And if she pitched me out, I clawed the air, I flipped my body to the side, and I heard Terry Leonard say, cut. And when that happened, I started to climb up the rope because it was so fun, I couldn't wait to do it again. And Terry laughed and said, you did it, Conan, you did it in one take. In fact, that's what I'll call you, one take Conan. Cool, cool times with Terry Leonard, that's for sure. Here's another time I get killed. Um, a while back, I showed you a video of my very first time I got killed. And this is a photo from that particular uh, thing. Right after, another, another scene of two Neanderthals going after Sandal. Now, I'm already killed in this thing. So to pretend like I was a different kind of character, I lowered my gait because I wanted to act differently. And there's this gentleman here who would be sent after Sandal, and then I would go after Sandal. Now they gave me a spear that they notched so that when she sliced it, it would break easily. Well, this particular scene here took seven takes. The first take, I had a blood bag on my chest uh, and a pad. This gentleman had like a hand that he would throw up when uh, she sliced him, okay? <laughs> and then I would come barreling in with my spear straight at her, and she would knock the spear in half. Then I would raise it up, and she would, she would spin around and hit my blood bag and burst the bag. Well, didn't work out that way right off the bat. She, uh, she hurt the first guy, and then I come barreling in, and she missed the blood bag, and she missed the pad entirely. So the second take, they moved the pad on me to where she had hit, and that take she missed and hit me on the other side. Then third take, um, they put a bigger bag, bigger pad, bigger bag, bag so that she could uh, uh, hit me better. Well, she's scary. When, and when she would pivot around, she, you knew she wasn't very precise. She was just wasn't very precise. You know, that precision was something that Sven Olthorsen, the Shotokan champ, Scandinavia playing Thorgrim, we would discuss the precision of fi actual fighting and the safety factor uh, <clears throat> you had to be to make sure you don't hurt the other person. So this took seven takes and I literally stopped the production after about four takes and I said to Terry Leonard, I said, Terry, please set, set this up better. <coughs> I'm too, too scared to go after, go, to go barrel into her because she might miss and totally hurt. So he winked and looked at me and says, well, welcome to the stunt business. And he set it up so that was better and she was more precise. But this was the second and third times I was killed. So we... Now, we should go on. <clears throat> now, here's the temple. Again, I had talked about being one of the high priests wearing this robe. And I was positioned here, and I was also positioned on the upper decks up here. And in the night shoots, which lasted all night, there would be like 400, over 400 gypsies. And that's where the eerie scenes of James Earl Jones, 
talking with the fire pots lit up and down the uh, temple stairs. And they would hand out big blankets to all of us so we could rest through the night. And I am here. And over here is actually the wife of the snake handler. And it was the snake handler who was snapping this photo. He was in charge of the 36 or 32 snakes that he supplied so that the, the girls, for instance, would have these snakes around their necks while we stood on the stairs. It was very fun knowing this couple, uh, the snake handler and his beautiful wife. And um, they're cool, 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 cool. So now let's go up. All right, so again, my very first job, stand behind John Milius. That's me, by the way, and massage his shoulders and neck to help him get through his 12 hour days of filming. He loved me. You know, what kind of director wouldn't if you got yourself, you know, your neck relaxed, etc. So he wanted to find a part for me to first put me in to the movie. And here's my film debut. This picture here is the interior of the um, Neanderthal Eater of the Dead kitchen. And all around here, these guys are hacking up these bodies to be uh, eventually food to, no. Let's see what's happening here. I'll get it together here. We'll uh, see what, how I can do this. So, let me see. <sighs> Sorry about this. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Back. So, hmm. to do, do roughness. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Hmm. There we go. So now, if you look at this photo, I was positioned on a scaffolding that existed right here with gutted rubber bodies, male, females, etc. And they put me in this outfit, which you see here, and I was to walk along that scaffolding, grab a body, lower it down to the, uh, the hackers of the uh, bodies. And this is my film debut. Now, I played it as a character that was like half blind. I shouldn't figure out, you know, I'm a Neanderthal you to the dead. And I would go along the scaffolding, feeling the bodies as I went till I got to a female and grabbed the female and lowered the female gutted body down. My film debut. It was cool though. This again is a little temple photos. On top of the temple, I was positioned at times here um, I am over here with this group 
And it was fun. These are all Spanish people. But what's cool is um, I was one of the very, I don't know how many, very few Americans. I don't remember much of anybody else except like the major characters that were Americans. But I was immersed with all these gypsies. And the coolest thing was um, when this temple was cleared of bodies and they, it was used for a background for filming when things were happening before in front of that temple, they would have like six guards walking up and down the uh, temple steps. And these guards were young Spanish guys and they had Boda bags of wine. And they would call me saying, Kona, come here. And I'd scamper up the steps and they would laugh at me because the Boda bag, I could never get the stream hitting my mouth very well. But it was fun to be drunk with a bunch of Spanish guys dressed in thick leathers. It was not this high priest stuff. It was the guards, the, the battle, battle guards of the temple. So, Here I am again, trying to emulate the character Conan. And essentially, what I pulled away from the movie was knowing that I lived it. I lived this barbaric lifestyle and learned. I learned that I could create, create um, my fantasy. I, I wasn't like grasping after being in the fantasy. The comic books were the scene, they were so important to me. The Bushima, the artists, the different artists, they drew the character in different positions and different um, wondrous uh, sets. So now I looked at the comic books that were my like inspiration and I became a movie character. I play 11 parts and I actually got into the comic book of the movie. And that's my little dissertation. Um, to forget, this was a rough draft. I don't know if this is acceptable to you. Um, I have to eliminate my coughing. Um, but this is my attempt to try to share with you some of the background. Um, and other than that, um, I'll submit this to you with the concept of, is, it, is, this, is this what you want or is this too, too flagrant copyright violation for uh, Facebook? Talk to you later.